Patrick Tuttle is an assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Washington. When not making plots about otters, she is a pretty fair juggler and has never met an audience she hasn't bribed. Oh, that's, that's crossed out. It's supposed to be liked, an audience she hasn't liked. <laughs> Let's welcome Sarah Tuttle. Baryons. 
We know about them, and they trace things, and they don't always trace everything, but we can see them, so that seems important. So we're going to go and see what we can learn with baryons. I will remind you, we needed galaxies to find dark matter, which Gray hasn't found yet. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little edge here. I'm really excited for when they do, though, because I hear the whole building gets cake, so. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So we know what we're looking for. Perfect. Now, the advantage is, even though galaxies are a very tiny fraction of energy in the universe, they are all the heck over the place. We're talking, they're like falling out of space like nobody's business. I mean, not actually, they won't fall on you probably. Although, Joey might have other things to say about that. So, you know, probably will warn you if the galaxies are coming for you. But this is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. This is actually an updated Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It's from 2014. It uses multi-wavelength data from Hubble. And what's amazing about this part is that this image, which I always think is spectacular, is a piece of the sky that's about this much. So if you hold your arm out like this, this is what you would see. You know, if you were the Hubble Space Telescope. So it takes some adjustments, but close enough. <laughs> There's about 10,000 galaxies here. Almost everything that you see in this frame that makes light, except for a very small number of things, are galaxies. There are billions of stars in each of these galaxies. In fact, the only stars that you can see here, I can pick out about three, there's one here, here. These are all stars that are local to us and in between us and these distant galaxies. Now, if we zoom in, we're able to actually see features of the galaxies. And in fact, again, zooming in, each of these points are galaxies. Billions of stars in each of these small pieces. So the big things, it's not just because they're bigger. Some of them might be a little bit bigger, but it's mostly because they're closer. As the galaxies get further and further, we're not resolving all of their features here. In this image, the only star that you see is here. Everything else is a galaxy. So even though we're only looking at a very small amount of our energy budget, we are seeing billions upon billions upon billions of stars. In fact, we expect that there are planets around almost every one of those stars. Right? So the scale of this is just staggering. Now, what I want you to think about is why do we use galaxies? What are they good for? Now, I use galaxies because I think they're totally fascinating and interesting to know about. But the cool thing is they are a laboratory for us to take physics that we're understanding on Earth and blow it up to scales that we start to push the edges of what's possible. So this is how the discovery around dark matter was made. Because when we start making measurements, of things that are larger and larger and larger, we're asking, does physics actually work the, th the way that we have interpreted it using the things around us like frogs and chocolate, right? What happens when we take it up to the size of billions and billions of things, billions of stars? And the answer is, we were missing a big piece of physics. But that's something we can't search for on Earth until we were able to explode the scale, right? So we needed that contrast. We needed to sort of change our perspective. Now, we have to measure these galaxies somehow. So I'm going to share with you a few of the projects that we are working on here at UW that we have built and are building. So this is the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. It takes place at Apache Point in New Mexico, as well as Las Campanas in, in uh, Chile. And what's cool about Sloan is it's been going on for over 20 years, and it keeps getting rejuvenated. So first we had images of galaxies, then spectra, then multiple spectra. And what's incredible is if you look here, there are fiber optics in these cables. And for every galaxy that gets observed spectroscopically, someone plugs that fiber in. So we actually have someone plugging plates. And these plates, these are giant aluminum plates that get drilled in the basement of the Physics and Astronomy Building. You can go visit them. It's super exciting. We actually just gave a whole bunch of them away at the last week's astronomy meeting. And I want to show you a few of the exciting results. So these are images from the Sloan Telescope. These are two galaxies. And what you can see here is that they're kind of they're boring, you know, I mean galaxies. If galaxies were boring. But these galaxies are a little bit plain. And we're studying them because they're unusual in that their disks are very red. So they're not forming stars. Usually, spiral galaxies like the Milky Way form stars. And we're trying to find out why that is. And the one I want to draw your attention to is up here with this funny pink that I've zoomed in on. It turns out that this galaxy is probably not forming stars because it's actually the remnants of a merger. So we know that sometimes galaxies crash into each other and make bigger galaxies. 
But because it takes so long, it can be hard to find. This one is making hot gas because it's having shocks crash together, and that stops stars from forming. So we're able to do that um, in my lab here. <laughs> Definitely. In theory. We're able to build instruments that allow us to do that. So these are two instruments called integral field spectrographs. Um, and when we replicate the integral field spectrographs, we're not only able, now watch this, I'm going to jump right over gray. We're not only able to study galaxies, we're able to use galaxies to study dark energy. So we study lime and alpha emitting galaxies to constrain dark energy. And so we have new data coming in on this now. I built an outrageous number of spectrographs that we will not speak of without drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and we're able to measure with these instruments all different characteristics of stars and galaxies. We have kinematics, stellar ages. Here we even have extended gas emission. So I just want to pitch very briefly, we're building in our basement a new experiment for Sloan. And we're going rogue, you'll be surprised to hear. We're actually, um, oops, we're actually building robots. Robots are taking over from the plate pluggers, and we're going to use robots to study galaxies. So. This is not filled with a million dollars, although that might be a cooler prize. <laughs> we are building fiber optic robots. Ooh. I know they're so tiny, right? Oh well, next time you can come visit them when you're done. But we're building robots that will allow us to study these galaxies, millions and millions of them, both nearby and all the way out to the edge where we'll study the formation of supermassive black holes. So if you have questions about fibers, my inability to click on things, galaxies, or otters. I look forward to talking to you very shortly. Thank you.